Good morning, good afternoon, wherever you are in the world joining us today. So very, very welcome. Um, this is the Health Considerations for the Fall Semester uh, webinar for the NUN program. Um, we are so happy to have you. It looks like a lot of you are joining us. So we're going to give everyone just another minute or so to make sure everyone's online and connected before we get started. For those of you who just joined us, again, welcome. It looks like we have quite a few participants uh, joining. Um, that's, that's very exciting. Um, again, introducing myself, my name is Valentina Di Blasi. I'm the Associate Director of International Pathway Programs. My pronouns are she, her, hers. And this is the Health Considerations for the Fall Semester webinar uh, dedicated to the NUN program. Thanks for joining us. Looks like there's still quite a few um, connecting. So we're gonna give it just one more minute for everyone to be able to join. Oh my goodness, it looks like we already have some questions in the Q&A, so that's a great opportunity for me to talk a little bit about how the webinar is going to work today. Um, we do have a very high number of participants in the webinar, so uh, everyone's going to be um, unable to, to unmute themselves. It's a um, You can put your, your questions in the Q&A section uh, that you'll see at the bottom of the screen. And we have dedicated staff today uh, that can help answer one-on-one. -on -one. It looks like we've reached uh, 400 participants, so um, we can probably go ahead and get started. Um, again, introducing myself, I'm Valentina Di Blasi. I'm the Associate Director of International Pathway Programs. And uh, we're so happy that you were able to join us today for this important topic. We have some wonderful presenters to today. Um, we have Mary Barrows, who's the Senior Director of Learning Strategies and Student Success in the Disability Resource Center at Northeastern University. Kelly Moran, who is the Director of Coordinated Care and Health Promotions in the University Health and Counseling Services Office. And lastly, we have uh, Alyssa Fontana Berg, who's the Associate Director of a Global Safety Office. Um, so three great speakers today, and I will remain, as I said, in the chat and be able to help answer any questions you might have. We are going to go ahead and get started. So turning the mic to you, Alyssa, thanks so much for uh, hosting today. Great. Hi, everyone, and welcome. We're so excited for you to be going abroad this fall. Um, it's really a, a great time. Um, you know, I think only about 10% of American college students uh, travel abroad. And so for you to do that your first semester of college is really exciting, um, no matter where you are coming from in the world, um, if the US isn't your home. Um, so as Valentina mentioned, my name is Alyssa Fontana Berg. I'm the Associate Director of the Global Safety Office here at Northeastern. I'm gonna be emceeing kind of today's presentation. Um, first, I'll begin with talking a bit about pre-travel considerations. So between now and when you depart for your program, some things that, some tips and some guidance that um, we hope you take into consideration as you plan for your time abroad. Um, then I'll dive into seeking care while you're on site and I'll bring in um, my colleague Kelly Moran to help with that as well to discuss some of the resources that you have available to you. Um, and then uh, Mary will uh, finish off the the presentation talking about the Disability Resource Center and different accommodations. So if you are a student that has received accommodations during your time in high school and would like to pursue them while you're abroad, um, she'll tell you a little bit more about how to do that this summer. Um, hopefully, if we have some time for questions at the end, we can address them, but the NUN team will be addressing them throughout um, via the Q&A section. 
Um, so just some expectation setting for today's presentation. Um, as Valentina mentioned, we have over 450 participants. So please address your questions in the Q&A um, and the NUN team will address them as throughout the presentation. And if we have time at the end, we can also um, address a few questions. Um, we will not be providing medical advice today. These are tips, consideration, guidance, but we hope that you will go back to your healthcare providers and discuss the topics um, that we talk about here um, and your specific care needs as it relates to your time abroad. Um, and then finally, each destination is unique. We have um, locations spanning across Europe some that are large public institutions, some private colleges, some study pro abroad providers. They each have their own unique set of resources and they also operate in different countries um, throughout Europe. And there are some differences in norms of care, availability of medications and care, and some things that you have to take into consideration. Um, unfortunately, I do not have time today to address every site specifically. So we're gonna be talking in a general um, overview of some guidance. Um, if you do need more specific resources, please use the time between now and when you go abroad to speak with the NUN team to attend pre-departure orientations where you'll learn more about the specific information about your sites and ask those questions as you prepare for your travel abroad. Um, so, you know, we're happy to follow up after the presentation um, through email and through conversations in the months ahead. Uh, but I will not be able to speak to each unique circumstance today. Um, as a note, I'm from the Global Safety Office here at Northeastern. As global travel is paramount to the university, uh, we do have an office that is dedicated specifically to, to safety abroad. Um, we are part of the police department, although we are not police officers, um, and we help respond to emergencies that may arise abroad, but we also do a lot of pre-travel planning assistance and education, um, and we also help um, the university with travel uh, policy uh, compliance. So our website can be found globalsafety.northeastern.edu. Um, the easiest way to get in touch with our office is my travel plans at northeastern.edu. Um, and I've also lifted, listed my colleagues as well in the office, Kushal Safi, my director, and my colleague, JJ Kappa, um, because during your time abroad, you may interact with any of us um, depending on the circumstances. So definitely recommend that you check out globalsafety.northeastern.edu for some additional resources. Um, so jumping into pre-travel um, health um, and well-being planning, there's a couple steps that I would ask that you take in the months ahead to help prepare for your experience abroad. Um, so one being meet with your doctors, visit your doctor, your dentist, any specialist that you may see um, and get in for a checkup, a physical um, and have a conversation about where you'll be traveling to, um, the duration that you'll be in country, your medication care or needs and any other concerns you may have about traveling to a new place. Um, it's really important that you have these conversations in advance um, because a lot of times you may need to prepare for the experience in regards to acquiring medications that we, you may need, or if they're not obtainable prior to travel, you're going to need a plan for how you're going to get them in place um, while you're abroad. And then if you need any follow-up care while um, you're abroad, this is also important to discuss. If you see a, a specialist regularly um, and may need to continue that abroad, I would have that conversation with your doctor about how frequently, how often that that should occur and if that would occur while you are abroad. Um, because it's really important that you carry on your, your healthcare needs while you are abroad and not just use it as a time to say, well, I'm, I'm away from my doctor, I don't need care anymore because that may not be the case. Um, some special considerations that I would say, definitely recommend speaking to your doctors about if you're on any controlled medications, so any um, ADHD medications or anything along those lines lines as well as um, infusion medications. Those are also can be more difficult and challenging to obtain abroad. And if so, they can be expensive. So talking to your doctor in advance, what um, the plans may be would be important here. Um, and in some cases, if you cannot obtain the medication um, 
prior to travel, the same medication that you're taking abroad may not be available. So you may need to speak with your doctor about potential alternatives if that is the case. Um, you should also confirm insurance coverage abroad. So the university does provide an urgent emergency coverage for students while they are abroad, um, but this does not include any of that routine care prescription refills. This is really urgent and emergency situations that were unplanned that arise while you are traveling. So you are expected to continue your current um, insurance or an insurance that covers you abroad during your time um, on the NUN program. There are some sites that may offer products or they are required for visa purposes. So you can find more information about those on the NUN website for your site. And you'll also learn more about those during your orientations. It really just depends. Um, the, the university also, while it provides urgent emergency coverage, it is not considered travel insurance. So it does not cover your belongings, your luggage, flight delays, flight cancellations, tuition insurance, those type of things. So if those are important to you, you should also check um, into what plans may be available for purchase. Um, our website, globalsafety.northeastern.edu, has an insurance page, and that also lists a couple different providers that you could explore um, purchasing additional insurances through. Um, so, um, as I mentioned, uh, the circumstances at each location may be different in terms of what is available, what medications uh, may be prescribed locally, what type of care um, is available locally, what is the norm for medical care in the country. So we do recommend that you understand what your care needs are while abroad, and then you do your own research as it relates to how you will obtain that and achieve that while um, you are at your site. Um, so again, medication can be uh, a bit complicated depending on the type of medication that you are taking. Um, if it is legal, if it is available, if it is um, locally prescribed, all of those things can vary. Um, so you may want to have a conversation about um, that with your doctor depending on the type of medication. Um, some good resources to look into. A lot of the uh, countries have uh, like a Department of Health, a Minister of Health that often uh, will produce um, different search features about types of medication, medication names that may be available. Um, the consulates or embassies for the destination of your country that you'll be traveling to can also point you in the direction of those different resources. Um, because there's often a, a department or government authority that is responsible for um, the importation of medications and can help answer those specific questions for you. Um, additionally to your care needs, think also about what you do to look after your well-being while you're at home and how you're going to, consider, to continue that while you're abroad. Um, it's going to be a time of great transition for you. Not only are you uh, going into college for your first time, you're doing it abroad. And so that can be a, a lot of change. Um, and so you really should consider how you are going to continue, continue um, the habits or um, the things that you do that keep you feeling good and, and healthy um, while you're at home. Um, so that may be, you know, your routine, thinking about, you know, once you know what your class schedule will be, how you will work things such as exercise and, and considering your diet into um, different things. If it's, if you are someone that talks to your family every day, you're really close, have a conversation with your family about what communication could look like while you're abroad. You may, you know, the first couple of weeks, you may be caught up in, in getting oriented and, and starting classes and getting used to things. So you may find yourself with less time to talk to your, your family than you may have initially planned. So maybe setting, a, setting aside some time um, that, you know, hey, um, family, let's talk every Sunday night at 8 p.m. my time, you know, kind of having those conversations about having those touch points and how frequently you may want those touch points is really important 
Um, and then those conversation can, can, conversations can always evolve as you get to the site. If you feel like you need more support from those back home, um, you know, have that conversation, speak up and say, hey, can we can we add in a call on Wednesday night as well? Or, you know, I'm I'm really trying to immerse myself in the experience here. So talking every day is is a bit much for me. Can we schedule those calls to be three times a week or something like that? Because that, I think that sets some some appropriate um, boundaries between um, allowing you to have the space to grow in your new environment while also staying connected to your family while you're abroad. Um, and then also, um, as you're packing your bags, uh, as you go abroad this fall, um, when you are packing medication, please make sure that you keep them in the original packaging, clearly labeled with your prescription information. Um, we recommend packing them in your um, carry-on luggage because luggage can get lost, can get delayed. Uh, you don't want anyone tampering with um, your medication medication. So please carry those with you. Um, we also recommend carrying a copy of the prescription, um, along with a letter from your doctor, basically indicating that the medication is for your own personal use for a diagnosed medic medic uh, medical condition, um, and that uh, it lists the medication type, name, dosage information, just in case there are any questions um, if you are stopped by customs, for example, upon arrival. Um, there may be circumstances where you may need to get a permit for import for a controlled substance. So again, if you are taking those controlled substance medications like Adderall, for example, um, you want to check with the consulate of the destination you'll be traveling to to see if you do need permission. And some countries are very much like if it's your own personal medication for a diagnosed condition, they allow you to have a personal supply on you. Other ones, they, other countries, they are more concerned about the paperwork. So it's really just making sure that you have the time to um, figure out what is relevant for your situation and have that in order. Um, if you are traveling to a destination where English is not the first language, having that letter uh, translated into the local language is, is usually just a, a plus to have just in case you do have any questions, they do have any questions upon arrival. Um, I do have here for those that may be traveling with chronic illness or dietary needs, um, if you, uh, you can scan this QR code, um, and it will take you to a Google Doc of some different uh, resources. So um, as many of you may have been drawn to Northeastern for the, the co-op program, um, our office actually has a co-op every semester. And one of our co-ops from last year put this resource list together um, because they are a student with chronic illness um, and they wanted to put together some resources for students um, to be able to travel and to have tips um, and resources for those of you that may need it. Um, so if you are gluten-free or have nut allergies or have Crohn's or things like that, there are some resources in there that can help um, you prepare for your travel. They're not necessarily endorsements. They're just a collection of online resources for those um, who may be traveling. Um, if you have allergies, consider uh, putting together some information, especially if you're traveling to a destination that um, again, English is not the first language. Having the, the names of your allergens translated can be really important. Uh, you know, if it's a food allergy for ordering foods or a medication allergy, if you end up needing to go to the hospital or something along those lines, being able to communicate that in the local language can be really important. Um, it could be, you know, a picture. Um, it could be a, a note where you have the name. Um, you know, Google Translate on your phone can also be a great resource for that. Um, but those are some resources that are available to you um, if you want to explore them further. Um, so now once you're on site, um, again, you will receive site-specific information at your pre-departure orientations. If you're coming to Boston, you'll meet with a lot of the representatives 
from the host institutions that you'll be studying with and they'll talk a bit about these resources there and then you'll learn more about them when you get on site but each site has its own specific resources as it relates to health and safety um, and so you'll find out more about those in advance but they can vary between um, doctors that are on call to clinics within the university to um, private and public clinics and resources available locally. Um, we have curated those resources for each destination and you'll learn about those in, in the fall. Um, and for that reason, your on-site staff are usually a great resource for guidance in the event that you do need to seek care um, on site, they can help direct you to what resources may be available, say, during the week versus the weekend, some things are closed, you know, other things are available. Um, and so if you do find yourself um, having a need to seek medical care while you are abroad, talking to your on site staff is a great first step. Um, if you do find yourself in the middle of an emergency situation, there are often going to be several numbers that you can contact. Again, someone from the on-site staff is always going to be on call 24 seven and you will get that local phone number as to um, who to contact when you're on site. Um, additionally, there are local emergency numbers similar to 911 that you can contact depending on the situation. Uh, the, the equivalent throughout Europe is 112. If you'll be traveling to the UK, it's 999. Um, but oftentimes if you do contact 112, you'll also get through as well. Um, I'll teach you a bit about the Global Safety and Support Network or GSSN on the next slide. Um, but that is a resource that is available to the whole Northeastern community on programs abroad and will follow you not only through your time on the NUN program, but also as you, um, you know, go on a dialogue of civilizations once you return to Boston or study abroad again in the future, or go in co-op. Um, that is a resource that our, often, our office um, manages that is available for all community members. And then the host institutions may also have their own emergency numbers that you can contact, whether it's security, whether it's um, you know, a, a representative from the university, it really depends on the site. But oftentimes you have a multitude of options available to you if you need to seek assistance at any time. Um, because it is very important that you are able to call for assistance if you need it, um, you are required to maintain calling capabilities on Northeastern programs abroad. Um, that can be through your current phone plan if your provider offers a global plan or through a local SIM that you obtain upon arrival, but essentially you need to be able to call for help if you need it. And we need to be able to contact you as well in the event of an emergency. Um, if you ever find yourself not knowing what the appropriate resource is, um, our Global Safety and Support Network is always available to help triage. Um, and so a little bit more about what that is. Um, it's a 24 seven international assistance hotline. Um, it is managed by a third party provider, Crisis 24, um, a Garter World company, which is the largest security provider in the world. Um, and they have a medical assistance unit that um, was formerly called the Collinson Group, but now they are part of Crisis 24. And they are going to be the ones answering the phone and triaging the phone um, and the phone call. And they work very very closely with my office to help provide support in different situations. They can be reached by either of the numbers here. So again, it's really important that you are able to make that call if need be. Um, they have a US based number or a UK number. So, so those of you calling from the UK or even Europe in general, it may be easier for you to use that number. Um, and they do also have an email address, but we do, you know, recommend that if it is something that you need an, an urgent, you know, assistance with that you call that hotline to get the fastest service. Um, they will notify us of your call for a couple of reasons in order to help provide assistance through the program. Um, but also because of that urgent emergency care that I mentioned, um, 
we essentially have to authorize um, that you are a traveler on a program and this meets the coverage needs. Um, so it's a blanket policy. It's not assigned to an in individual. So there has to be an approval on the Northeastern side. Um, but what they can do is they primarily provide medical and hospital referrals, um, and they can also coordinate care. So if you do find yourself in the need of medical care while you're abroad, they can help direct you to a clinic, to a hospital, um, to a specialist. It really depends on the type of situation and what the needs are. And then if it's an ongoing care issue, so if it's something that you may need follow-ups for or um, if you may need to return home for care, they can help coordinate all of that. Um, and so they, they have a medical team on staff that will review medical reports and make recommendations. They can also be a second opinion um, for, you know, if you go to a doctor and you are unsure if the treatment plan is appropriate, they can also um, review those records and provide guidance. Um, they do have nurses on call to triage issues. So if you are ever feeling like you are sick, but you're not sure if you should go to the doctor or if you've got a rash and it's not sure if it's something that is just minor or if it's something that should be explored further, you can call in and ask to speak to their medical team. And there is a nurse on call at all times that can speak to you to provide guidance. Um, and then, as I mentioned, they can identify medical resources if they feel that you need to be seen and set up those appointments. And if it's something that is covered under our urgent and emergency care, um, they can also attempt to place a guarantee of payment, which would mean you wouldn't have to pay out of pocket um, for those services. Um, I will say that abroad, um, some facilities uh, will require that you pay cash in advance and then file back through your insurance for reimbursement. And a lot of um, US-based insurance companies that provide coverage abroad also provide um, coverage on a reimbursement basis. So you may have to pay out of pocket for medical care and then file for reimbursement on the back end. So please be prepared um, for that and talk to your family about that in the event that you do need to see a doctor. Um, there may be out of pocket a cost associated with it. Um, and then, as I mentioned, they can review medical records, make and make care recommendations. Um, for seeking care abroad, sometimes the philosophy of care or the medications that are prescribed typically for different conditions may differ from what you're used to in the US or your home country. And so there may be adjustments to, um, you know, your idea of what care looks like. But if you ever have doubts about the care that you are receiving, um, you can always contact them to say, hey, this is the situation. This is what I've been prescribed. Does that seem appropriate? And they can do a review on that as well. Um, and then we also utilize them, as I mentioned, if you have to return home um, or if there is a significant situation where it's no longer safe, for you to be where you are, we have um, emergency evacuation services, which hopefully we will not need to utilize, but it is something that we have plans for. Um, but if you do feel like you are in need of immediate um, assistance, if it's a life-threatening situation, please contact emergency services first and then call the hotline once you um, feel the, you know, the situation is stable and you have a minute to do so. Um, I've touched on insurance a bit. Uh, the urgent, so a bit more about the urgent emergency coverage. It's for students on programs abroad, but there are a number of ex exclusions. I just want to point those out to you in advance so that if you do need additional insurance that you are able to purchase that um, prior to your travel. Um, all of this information is on globalsafety.northeastern.edu slash insurance. I recommend reviewing that in conjunction with the NUN page, health and safety page for your site. Um, because as I mentioned, for some sites, it's required by the Czech government, for example, that you have this specific insurance plan while you're abroad. So there may be some additional aspects that 
um, your site has um, that you want to take in consideration uh, while you're reviewing your different insurance products. Um, when you are calling for assistance through the hotline, just a few tips. Um, it is a dedicated Northeastern phone number, so they will know you are a Northeastern caller, but please identify yourself as a student, your program name and location, so NUN Scotland. Um, provide a callback number in case you are disconnected, and then tell them exactly what um, you need and what has been done. I've been feeling sick for three days. I went to the pharmacy and I took over the counter medication, but it doesn't seem to be working. Um, you know, what should I do now? Or I'd like to speak to a nurse about some symptoms that I've been having, or I think I broke my leg. I need to go to the emergency room. Um, just be specific as possible. Or if you're on the way to the emergency room, hey, I think I broke my leg. I'm on the way to the emergency room at this hospital. And then they can help facilitate that care. Um, and then let them also know if the on-site staff has been notified or not, because we can help get them in the loop if you have not already done so. Um, so that we can help get you uh, further assistance. Um, so with that, I'm gonna turn it over to Kelly Moran, my colleague from UHCS. Thanks so much, Alyssa. Um, hi everyone, it's a pleasure to be here with you today. Um, today, I'm gonna to talk to you about a couple of different things. Um, in addition to some of the services that Alyssa has just reviewed with regard to um, emergency care, something that Northeastern offers all of our full-time students is a find at Northeastern. Find is 24-hour support wherever you are, anytime, anywhere. Essentially what that means is if your student uh, is having a difficult time, they can call FIND. You see the three phone numbers at the bottom of this um, screen. And the phone numbers are uh, available inside the US, certainly one um, for Canada specific and then international. So if your student is obviously abroad, we want them to use the international number. It's important to note that students will need to have an international calling plan. I know Alyssa reviewed a little bit of this earlier, um, but we want to make sure that we highlight that. Uh, if they you know, want to connect with a counselor, they want to get support, they really need to be able to make that phone call using the phone number below. What will happen when they call is that they will connect with a mental health provider who will talk with them about what's going on in the moment, um, what kind of things they've done in the past, what immediate steps need to be taken, and then what long-term long steps are available. Um, they will help your uh, student in finding local care if they want to meet in person or virtual ongoing care. These sessions are all free and unlimited with the exception of specialized care. So if your student needs to um, go in and see a certain type of mental health specialist, maybe for um, some eating struggles, then we will use your health insurance to try to connect them. Um, students also have access to Headspace, which is a leading mindfulness and meditation app. Uh, that will not be available until after the start of the school year. So September 6th or 7th, I believe, um, it will become available for your students and they can find more information on our website. Additionally, we recognize that all, you know, not all issues that come up are clinical issues or that students necessarily want to seek out counseling support. So as a result, we also offer Silver Cloud, which is an online mental health platform that really has educational information for students around topics that we're consistently seeing. So depression, anxiety, resilience, stress, sleep. Um, and so students can go onto our website, sign up for Silver Cloud, and really learn about how to manage um, some of these things and what are some tips and tools uh, to kind of get them working through maybe a difficult day.
I wanted to provide you a QR code um, for information about Find Silver Cloud Headspace and online workshops. We do offer online workshops throughout the year. They're available to our students across the globe, and they too often are educational in nature, focused on some of the leading topics that we see happening with our students. I do know that in the comments, there have been a number of questions regarding immunizations and physical. So I'd like to take a minute to address that now. With regard to immunizations, I do see that many of you have commented about our um, immunization tracker record not being out yet. Um, right now, myself and uh, other administrators within UHCS are working really hard to put the final pieces together for um, a new tracker, a new process in order to submit your um, immunizations. Uh, we are very hopeful that it will be out within the next week or so. And so our up, uh, website will be updated and you'll receive email information with that. Um, with that being said, we do not require a physical health exam. I know that many folks um, are sort of used to submitting a, a health report um, about a physical every year to school, but in fact, the university does not require that. What we do require is updated immunizations um, in compliance with the standards that we set forth. That information is on our website. So if you're thinking about and starting to be planful, and we hope that um, if nothing else from this webinar today, one of the key takeaways is that uh, we're excited that you're you're going abroad, but we need to make sure that you hear that being planful is going to be best for your health and your success. Um, so being planful about immunizations and checking out our website and really looking at that information, um, figuring out whether or not you meet all of the standards that are in place, um, it would be a really great first step in the, in the coming week until uh, more information is uh, reviewed and sent out. Next slide, please. Um, in addition, over the last 16 to 18 months, the University Health and Counseling Service, along with our colleagues in the Office of Prevention and Education at Northeastern, as well as the Provost Office, have been really working um, together to come up with a series of mental health guides. Often we're getting a, a lot of questions about how to have conversations, how to support friends, how to figure out how to navigate um, this vast uh, network here at Northeastern. And so see you see here on the screen, there's a student mental health guide for the global university system, uh, two links that will be provided when we send uh, this all out, one that is for a parent and family guide, and then one that is uh, the global student system. Really, the intention of these are to really provide students, families, parents, loved ones, tips and tools on how to manage or or identify if your student is having a difficult time, what are the places that you can contact, what are the services that are available, of course, in addition to what we've reviewed here today, um, and also how to have those conversations with someone that you care about. Um, if there are more extenuating circumstances, maybe how to reach out to other offices um, outside of UHCS, maybe we care, or I'm talking with folks in NUN about how to really care and access care for your student. Next slide, please. So the Office of Prevention and Education at Northeastern are my colleagues, our colleagues, um, and they really work on a number of different issues surrounding um, alcohol and other drugs, sexual violence, as well as um, having a, a robust um, educational package around online modules. So OPEN provides confidential and supportive check-ins. Um, we're not here to say that we think that your students are going to be drinking when they go abroad, but we do recognize that it does happen and we do have support services if at any point um, it becomes a concern or uh, there needs to be some maybe some behavioral conversations. Um, in addition, we have services that are provided to all of our students around sexual violence, sexual harassment, and assault, um, not only through our Title IX office, but through OPEN, where students can receive confidential support um, who have, have been through an experience like this. We also have confidential resources of advisors. Um, 
for students who may be accused of um, causing harm to another student. Um, and online modules, as I said, are about different um, topics that become kind of threads for our student population and student populations nationwide around um, bystander intervention, when to step in, when to speak up, resilience, and a lot more. And so I invite you to check out the open website to look at these resources. And again, doing these things in advance of going abroad will be really important. Um, certainly when you're in the moment, maybe you've uh, had an experience you're not feeling so great, um, sometimes it's it's harder to remember where to access them. So if you do it now, uh, you'll be able to maybe have a, a little bit of a spark of a memory. Um, I am now going to turn this over to my colleague, Mary Barrows from the Disability Resource Center. Thank you, Kelly, very much. And um, good morning or afternoon, depending on where you are across our global network. Um, welcome to this webinar. Um, my name is Mary Barrows, and I am the Senior Director for Learning Strategies and Student Success. And one of the pieces of my portfolio is I oversee the Disability Resource Center. Next slide, Alyssa. So has, have you or have your son or daughter received accommodations in high school that you would like to receive while you're studying abroad? First thing we ask you to do is please visit the DRC website. Um, there is a three-step process for requesting accommodations. Um, and there are also con there's contact information there if you need some help in navigating that. It's basically a student disclosure form that we ask the student to complete. It's their voice. It's their opportunity to tell us what they think they will need and why. Then we need uh, documentation of a disability. For instance, in the case of a learning disability, that would be testing. In the case of chronic or medical conditions, uh, and additionally also psychiatric disabilities, we have updated update clinical forms that can be completed by the current treating clinician that are included on this page. And then finally, if you have the student has received um, accommodations on standardized testing or has a 504 and IEP plan in high school, uh, as well as private high schools can provide us a letter on letterhead. We ask for verification of that as well. Next slide, please, Alyssa. <clears throat> um, there are some differences in requesting accommodation. Some of our partner sites abroad will accept the DRC's review of documentation and our approval of accommodations. And we have uh, open lines of communication with those sites. Um, and then what that means is that the student only has to submit information once and that would be to the DRC. Some sites will conduct their own review and determination. And what this means is the this requires the student to be submitting information to both the assigned site and to the DRC. Um, next slide, please, Alyssa. And this is right now, this is our list of those that will accept the DRC review. We have re relationships with uh, JCU in Rome, um, Florence University of the Arts, St. Louis in Madrid, uh, University of New York in Prague, and American College uh, in Thessaloniki. Those that will conduct their own and independent review um, so again, remember that would require you to send both uh, information to the DRC and to the site will be Queens University in Belfast, UCD in Dublin, uh, University of Glasgow, American University in Paris, and I just recently discovered also our sites in Portugal and Berlin, Germany. So those are the cases in which you would submit information to both sites. Thanks, Alyssa. Now, there are some subtle differences depending on which site you're at. All offer some version of standard accommodations, and those are basically around um, ex extra time on exams and reduced distraction setting. However, uh, the differences can be to remember um, the, the, the amount of time for exams. So there are some that offer the standard 1.5. There are some who will only offer uh, time in a quarter, um, or some, some of them are 10 minutes per hour. Um, these can be determined, these will all be posted on their websites and, and the portals. 
um, deadlines for requesting accommodations. Right now, we've heard from um, Florence University of the Arts that once the semester begins, they will not be taking requests for accommodations. So please check on a regular basis with the sites. Extensions is something that people have uh, most of them will have a process in place for that, but it differs in terms of how long the extensions are and to whom the student must communicate. <clears throat> Next slide, please, Alyssa. Okay, so that brings us to the conclusion of our webinar. Yeah, so I think just to, I've got a couple of things here, general themes. So um, a participant mentioned about packing over the counter basics for cold flu, pain, allergy, stomach ache is a good tip. Absolutely. Anything that you're used to taking now that you feel um, like you may need while you're abroad, it's always good to have a familiar medication that you know how you'll react to, that you know what works for you. So um, if you can pack a supply of those, there are differences, again, at, at, in pharmacies and what's available across the countries. Um, you may be able to find some things, but they may be different types of medication. They may have different names. So, um, you know, if you want to, you know, just make sure that you have what you need, pack those in advance, put together a first aid kit where you've got those different supplies that you may need um, for your time abroad, that can be helpful. Mm -hmm. um, and then there was a question about the travel registry and the, um, the app, the mobile app. So um, there should be a note, try after July 1st. Right now we're making sure that um, your student profiles are all um, updated and imported into the system to be able to give you access. So if you hang on um, until then, hopefully your information will be all set up on the back end to allow you access. Um, Melissa, I have one I'd like to address too. Sure. Um, so there's a question in the chat, I mean, in the Q&A about sending our DRC determination to one of the fellow partners. If they're one of the institutions for which we have that relationship with, we will communicate that to the partner. Um, and the student will receive an email outlining that. So we'll do all the commute. Once we determine what accommodations we can approve, we will send that off to the partner. Um, the other question in there. Uh, okay, so there's a question about recency of a, um, testing. Um, it's all very, um, it depends. I know that's a terrible answer to give, but it is true. It does depend. So I would say email our office with the specifics and we'd be happy to answer that. The best thing advice I can give you, um, looking at the questions that are coming in, um, please be sure that you request the accommodations before departure. That's the safest way, uh, the most efficient way to handle it. If you know you had accommodations in high school, even if you only think you may need them, go ahead and do the paperwork. That is not going to hurt, and it will definitely meet any of the deadlines. Uh, okay, thank you. And just a just a note for accommodations for I think Mary um, might be worth you know obtaining testing overseas can be difficult if not impossible in some locations so uh, Mary do you want to speak to that yes so, sure. Um, so students, then there was actually uh, two questions in there about students who didn't have accommodations in high school. Someone has attained new testing. So I would say, please submit that ASAP. Um, if not to us, if it's one of the independent partners, make sure that they um, you submit that as soon as possible. Um, some students, um, you know, they think that um, they may have a disability, a learning disability, and haven't had testing. I would recommend that if you're thinking about that right now, and it's the end of June, that perhaps you see what the what the wait time is to be tested here in this country um, to get that off. If it's going to be too close to departure, um, you know, that, that'll be a personal decision. But like Alyssa said, with each country, it's different, the wait period, the um, the price, um, also insurance coverage, 
And, you know, we want to make sure that we're, that the student is being sent to a reliable community partner in that area. So the best information is to try to get, make sure that you can attain that before you go. Um, we also have a question about parents shipping medication. So in most cases, we do not recommend that you ship medication. It can get held up in customs. It can be illegal to import. Um, you may need permissions from, again, medical departments overseas. You may need to have a license to import. So typically speaking, we don't, do not recommend that parents mail medications abroad. Um, if you have a circumstance, I would recommend checking with the consulate um, to see if that is permissible. But again, it's at your own risk. Um, it can be, you know, packages can, can get lost, they can get held up, they, you know, can get tampered with. So um, in general, we would say no to mailing medications. The first you know, best course of action would be able to take as much, you know, with you as you would need. If that's not possible, then you need to look, look at a local supply. I see there's also questions about um, will U.S. prescriptions be, you know, um, considered abroad? Oftentimes, no, you still need a, a local doctor pr to prescribe it, but having that documentation can help facilitate that a lot easier. So if you bring those prescription information, if you bring your medical records with you to the extent that you would need to to show that you have a diagnosed medical condition, that you need this medication, then that can, you know, that can certainly expedite the process. Uh, but please be aware that medication types, dosage amounts, availability can all vary. So um, in what's prescribed here for one condition may not necessarily be the most common, um, you know, course of treatment or action in the country that you're traveling to. So they, that it's up to the doctor that you meet with really to consider if they would prescribe the same medication or if they would look at a different route. So um, again, all of those things are important to talk to your doctor about because, you know, if you've tried other medications that don't work for you, you may also want to have a list of what those may be. So if in case you do need to explore other medications, you have all of that information handy available to you. Um, I have a great question here, sure. and that is one more, maybe. maybe. Oh. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Just one more. OK, um, if the testing was done in a different language, yes, that is the responsibility of the student and family to submit to our office or uh, the partner office a translated version. Thank you. Sorry, <laughs> jump in and be the timekeeper. We are almost at time, and I just wanted to um, add some final remarks. First of all, really a big, big thank you to Mary, Alyssa, and Kelly for being here and guiding us through so many critical, very important um, themes that we explored today. As a reminder, if you have any additional specific questions, these two emails that are on the screen right now are, are where you would direct them, uh, specifically my travel plans for anything like specific medic. I see some questions still in the chat about specific medications and getting enough supply or potentially shipping or or getting prescriptions filled on site. If you have specific questions about medication management, direct that to my travel plans at northeastern.edu. And similarly with any question about disability um, accommodation, DRC at northeastern.edu. Mm -hmm. uh, another big question that kept coming up in the chat was, is this presentation getting recorded? Are you going to send it to us? Yes, we will send this presentation, the recording to this presentation with um, clear all the emails and, and all the resources that we covered. Um, we will send it uh, via email. It takes a couple of days to work on the recording, so probably early next week. You can expect to see that in your email address, um, in your Husky email. Uh, remember to check your Husky emails through the summer. This is where we try to stop emailing your personal email addresses and really um, encourage everyone to check Husky emails over any other form of communication. Very important. Um, and, and lastly, um, reminder to check out our website. Uh, there's a lot of questions in the chat that are specific to each site. And while Alyssa provided an excellent overview of the insurance, um, the travel insurance that covers all students for emergency medical needs, each site is slightly different and has slightly different 
potentially um, additional coverage um, or um, specific uh, site specific questions, considerations. Uh, so please check out our website as well um, for specific information about health services and counseling services at your unique NUN site. Um, I think that's it for today. Uh, another email that is not on the screen is nun at northeastern.edu. That's another great resource. Um, we are um, trying to get to um, answer as, as fast as we can. We do have a lot of traffic on that email. Um, that's why we, we put these other two also on there if you have specific questions. But in general, any, any NUN program general questions can go to nun at northeastern.edu. Thank you all for having uh, spent this hour with us today. We hope this was useful and we are looking forward to seeing you at pre-departure orientation, whether you're attending in person in July or virtually in August, more information will be shared at that time. Um, and also there will be an opportunity to ask more questions because you know we know you have you have them. So thank you and have a good rest of your afternoon or evening, depending on where you are in the world.